So don't be fooled by easy, cheap. Uh, it's it it's cleaner. It looks better. That that doesn't hack it when it comes down to time to go to your ref your local referee or emissions inspection or you're out in the middle of nowhere and your entire vehicle is being run off one ground distribution wire that's not going to that's not going to get the job done what's going to get the job done is years of diligence on the part of engineers doing this properly and as far as our bridge goes it is evolving you are going to see more and more electronic integration but we're going to maintain the fundamental basic redundancies and safety that the manufacturer has built in. What we don't want to do is jeopardize reliability with a bridge that is an invasive, possibly corruptive, and can cause issues. And like I say, we have been working with CAN, we have been working with discrete, analog, digital, and all the other technologies to integrate these. Without CAN, we can literally remove our MoTeC module and the vehicle will still run. And our CAN module will be the same way. You will be able to remove it, you'll lose some functionality, but you're still going to be able to drive home. So keep, keep an eye out for what comes up. All of our MoTeC modules have CAN technology built into them now, and we're going to add these functionalities as time goes along. So if you had a, a Generation 4 MoTeC module installed and the CAN was not active, it can be active down the road. If you look at this 13 that I'm driving, this thing is like a... It's like a factory Jeep. Um, we have full dash control. We have not only the manual air conditioning working. If you look at this, you can see the automatic on both the left and the right button. The left one controls fan speed. The right one controls temperature. So when you put it in automatic and you spin that center dial, that basically ch changes the modes and the fan speed if you have fan and automatic. We support all that. The steering wheel controls. We support that in the digital instrument cluster. All that information is going to be there and work. Cruise control. This all works exactly the way it did in a factory vehicle. And it's done in a way where there is no invasive corruption possible. It's discreet so that you know that if there were a failure, you're not only safe, but you're going to get home. I've had lock picks, which basically unlock your navigation and radio, cause vehicles to go down. I've had remote starters and other wireless module CAN interfaces go down and cause the vehicle to stop. That's how, that's how important the CAN network is to the vehicle. Your fuel pump is run off of a fuel pump relay inside of the tip pump. And if there were a security issue or a CAN corruption issue and that fuel pump relay turns off, you're pretty much screwed. Now I would know how to go in there and bypass it, but with our setup you don't have to do that. Our redundancies are built in. The GM computer will control the fuel pump relay. So these are all the things that we have going on and you have to look behind the scenes. The representation of easy and cleaner um, is not always the best way. When you're out in the middle of nowhere and you want the best possible reliability for you and your family, the best way is the manufacturer way in my opinion. And that's the way we're doing it. And we are moving towards, unfortunately, the law of diminishing returns are coming in here. We have virtually full functionality, and we've rationalized the system to the minimum possible to keep everything we want. Could we go a lot further and reduce the wire count, circuit count software? Yeah, we could do all that. But that's not what we're going to do. So stay tuned. We'll be driving a Gen 5 5.3 here soon. In the meantime, this, I must say that these LS3s, are, they're just awesome. Um, the way they run, the way they shift, the way they drive, how cool they run. Let's see here. Got this door open. I've been sitting here idling. We're at 194 degrees. It is relatively warm out, and I've been sitting here idling in this uh, LS3. And it barely is coming off the thermostat. It's an awesome, awesome engine. Power-wise, you can get any power you want out of an LS3. 450 horsepower, 500 horsepower, even more. Um, I personally like the 430 horse engine. It will crawl all day. It will run through the mud and water. It will get you where you want to go. And it does it in perfect reliability. Your wife can drive it to the store without the rump, rump, rump. You can go out and drag race it. And compared to, let's say, the Hemis or the Superchargers, I mean, let's face it, there's fast Hemis and there's fast turbochargers and Superchargers, but the LS3 will hold its own. And if it's not enough, you can add more and more to it to get what you want. 
But personally, I think the LS3 430 with a six speed right now is about the ultimate drivetrain. This customer was considering a Gen 5. He went with a Gen 4 LS3, and I don't think he's gonna be unhappy. This vehicle is compliant here in Nevada. This is a Nevada vehicle. This vehicle runs absolutely awesome. I just drove it up the Summerlin Parkway. It never kicked out of sixth gear. I'm out here in the desert idling it, and it's just like a stock Jeep with 450 horsepower. It just is it's a magic combination. And while we're gonna be moving into these Gen 5s because we have to, it doesn't mean that this Gen 4 is in. You can't take anything away from this Gen 4 swap. It's a fantastic swap, and I hope to be doing the, these for years to come. And we're going to continue to do it the way we've been doing it to give you the maximum functionality. Now, this this vehicle is running our new billet AC bracket, which is is not only functional, but it just looks awesome. Um, it's almost a shame to put it under the hood of a vehicle because you want to put it out on your coffee table and show it off. But the truck brackets are now completed. Um, this is an LS3, so we only have the billet AC bracket on it. But the billet LS3 power steering and alternator will be available soon. All the brackets are now available for the trucks. We've got our first production run in of 20 sets, and we've done plenty of testing. These are bolt-on, and they just look awesome. There's nothing out there that I, that I know that, that can compare. And of course, they give you the functionality of running stock AC lines, power steering lines, your stock accessories, including your alternator with smart charging. Um, it's really brought the kit to a different level, to almost a, uh, even a level beyond the Hemi, because with the Hemi, you're changing the accessories and lines and modifying the suspension and all that. We're almost putting this engine in and hooking everything back up so you can reuse all your original components and purchase those right from the dealer. And we're going to be using unmodified AC lines, which means you can just use your stock lines or go buy new ones at your, at, you know, it's your choice. And that means if you're in South Africa or Australia or the Arab countries where I have customers, you can just go to your dealer and buy AC lines. You're not coming to me. Bolt them on and you're ready to go. So I'm really, really proud of these billet brackets. I'm really proud of our, of our current harnesses and the, just the technology. That, I drive these Jeeps every day. I test drive them probably a new Jeep once or twice a week. And it just never amazes me how good, how, how nice these things drive. And then when I get in something else, I, 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 I have a hard time driving a 3.8 or a Penstar anymore. It just, it's so annoying, I don't want to drive it. Put a, put a supercharger on it, and it even makes it worse. Driving the Hemis, a um, lot of power. They don't have the refinement, the drivability, the smoothness, uh, the handling of the LS. I, 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 I can't explain it other than to say this just feels right to me. And nothing else out there up to this point can match the, the LS and a JK. And I think that's why we've been so... Um, so successful in in promoting the LS and a JK and it has now become an industry rather than the little cottage industry that it was when I started doing this back in 2008. Um, go to any major race, go to any major drag strip or or whatever venue and you're gonna find LS's there and there's a reason. Uh, these engines are like the small block Chevy of the past they're relatively inexpensive for what you get, which means you get a lot of value for dollar. They're powerful. They're reliable. They can go the distance, and they have longevity. The iron motors like the LY6, L96, LMGs, LY5s can go hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles, and these engines cost less than $2,000 in a wrecking yard. It's just a fantastic value. So we're going we're gonna to wheel this up to that mountain and then back and deliver this Jeep this weekend. See you. See you later. Uh, hopefully with the with the Gen 5 5.3 next. We may be doing a, another LS3, but hopefully the Gen 5.